Uh, that reminded me of, of um, when I was doing uh, the lazy ML compiler for the Cray computer, when the Cray computer was the fastest thing in the world. Um, they had a time command, like in Unix, you say time, and it told you how many seconds, but it also told you how many clock cycles it took to execute mm -hmm. the program. And every time you ran it, it took exactly the same number of clock cycles to run it. Wow. Because uh, Seymour Cray didn't believe in caches. He said, they're, they're, it's sort of un too uncertain what's going mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. So the machine was very uh, sort of deterministic. Of course, it was time shared, so you could be interrupted somewhere in the middle by running something else. But your program took the same number of clock cycles every time, which I thought was really cool. Something that, that I feel that we haven't really covered in depth is that, so you have you have currently a very broad view of programming and compilation, low level, high level, dependently, all, all of this stuff. What was your first uh, uh, exposure to functional programming or this, at that time, maybe a systematic view of programming? And what made you decide to go into this and not sort of come back out? Um, well, I told you my first exposure was the Sassel thing yeah. in the denotation of semantics course. I can tell you what my first exposure to programming was at all. The... Uh, school I went to, they got a computer PDP-8, and I thought, um, yeah, I want to know more about programming. So I went to the library, and I found a book called Fortran for those who know Algol. <laughs> and I mean, I didn't know Algol, but it was the only programming book that they had at the moment. So I, I, I borrowed that book and, and sort of I don't understand a word of this. this. This makes no sense to me whatsoever. So and when I went back to the library, they had a book about BASIC, and I thought, oh, I borrowed 